Namo Adidafa. Thanks so much for joining me for our daily practice check-in. Listen, listen, listen. This beautiful sound calls us back to our true home. The first mindfulness training. Aware of the suffering caused by the destruction of life, I vow to cultivate compassion and learn ways to protect the lives of people, animals, plants, and minerals. I'm determined not to kill, not to let others kill, and not to condone any act of killing in the world, in my thinking, or in my way of life. <clears throat> For our Dharma lessons, we're reading Ajahn Munindo's book, Unexpected Freedom. Today, we're beginning a chapter called Alone Together with Dhammapada, verse 205. Tasting the flavor of solitude and the nectar of peace, those who drink the joy that is the essence of reality abide free from fear of evil. <clears throat> Question. Can you explain the relative merits of practicing as a monastic and practicing as a householder? Could you also describe any general patterns of personality change that you have noticed in people as a result of Buddhist practice? Ajahn Munindo. Whether one lives the life of a celibate renunciant, as a monk or nun, or whether one lives as a layperson, a householder, is a question of one's choice of lifestyle. That choice is not just about personal preferences, but it has to do with all sorts of conditions, our accumulations, our karma. It is a basic premise of the Buddhist outlook that we did not come into the world as a blank sheet, but with a history and a set of tendencies. What we came into this life with forms the context and the background against which our life's unfolding takes place, the details of which most of us can't see. For all of us, however, monks, nuns, or lay people, the practice is essentially the same. We all encounter frustration, limited existence, and suffering. What matters is whether we are willing to receive our suffering consciously and look into the actuality of it, or whether we are committed, knowingly or unknowingly, to distraction and avoidance in order to delay looking at what is truly taking place. In both the householder's life and the monastic life, there is the full spectrum of commitment from those who are enthusiastically committed to seeing what the reality of each moment is to those occupied in distraction. What matters is whether our lifestyle is true for us and whether it helps us develop increased willingness. Willingness is what matters. The reality, whatever our choice of lifestyle, is that throughout our life, we have to face the evidence of our limitations. Whether we like it or not, we all experience not getting our own way and becoming lost in habitual reactivity. When we come right up against those experiences, how do we respond? Do we resist, saying, I shouldn't be this way, I should be more clear about what our, where I'm going in my life? Or is there the heart capacity to meet this person, me, in this experience of limitation in an unobstructed way. May all beings be well. May all beings be happy. May all beings be at peace. Namo Adidafa. Thanks so much for joining me today.